nice. or whatever. Ok. Cualquier cosa, chicos, ustedes les avisa arriba que están grabando, tienen que, si les piden el consentimiento, pongan que, que sí. Bueno, primero agradecerle, mi nombre es Oliverio Najmía, para los que no, no me conocen, yo soy profesor adjunto en la cátedra de Lestar Cají de Hánchez en Diseño 4 a la mañana y también eh, profesor adjunto en Taller Maldonado 3 a la tarde. Eh, la conferencia esta es un evento organizado en conjunto porque, bueno, por la temática que estamos trabajando en los dos años, aunque con escala distinta, nos parecía interesante el aporte de, de Franz y a Franz lo tuvimos de invitado ya el, el año pasado. Eh, Franz es uno, bueno, Senior Architect en un estudio que es la oficina que fundaron Van, eh, Ben Van Berkel con Caroline Voss. Hace años ya, cuando estaba en la facultad, consumíamos las revistas y todo donde salían los trabajos de ellos con, con devo devoción. Y él, además de trabajar ahí, y el rol que tiene como arquitecto, es eh, uno de los directores de la oficina. Eh, así que, bueno, la verdad que el evento el año pasado, la conferencia el año pasado, funcionó muy bien. Y la idea era hacerlo abierto este año también a, a la comunidad académica. Hay varios que nos estuvieron pidiendo los links por, por, por las redes. Eh, va a estar organizada en tres secciones. La primera, una, la presentación de, de Franz. La segunda parte va a abrir una serie de preguntas y respuestas abiertas a, a todos los docentes y también los, los estudiantes. Y, y por último, eh, una sesión de corrección o de review de alguno de los trabajos de, de los estudiantes. Obviamente se pueden quedar hasta, hasta el final, pero bueno, por ahí eso ya les es menos, menos específico. No voy a hablar mucho más porque me parece que lo interesante es escucharlo a él más que, que, que a mí. So, Franz, I made a really short introduction about the courses and about the, the, the schedule of your, of your presentation. The, the three stages, and so... The floor is all yours. We listen. Ah, uh, one last thing. Una cosa última para todos. Mutémonos los que no estemos hablando, cosa de que no entre ningún ruido de fondo. So I ask everybody to mute their mix so it doesn't bother you. All right? Thank you, Oliverio. Uh, Thank you very much for taking the time for, for us. Yeah, it's it's getting a bit dark already over here in Amsterdam, guys. It's, uh, it's about 5.15 in the afternoon. And uh, lovely to see you all, really good to, uh, to have such a big audience on board uh, from Buenos Aires, fantastic. Um, as Olivia Elio said, I'm, um, I'm working at UN Studio. I think you all know UN Studio. I'm one of the directors by now. And uh, of course, trying to be in all of the designs that we're doing, but we're doing so many that uh, I have my own regions. I'm working most of the time in the Middle East, North Italy, and North America, uh, and sometimes also in Russia. Uh, I'm going to take uh, a look at what we're doing. I heard from Oliverio the semester that you're following and the gravity of your education currently in this time, in the COVID time, uh, just like us here in Amsterdam, not being able to really go outside for a long time, not being able to see big groups of friends not going to a restaurant, not going to this. So it's uh, an extremely tough period for all of us. And uh, let's see if we as architects or future architects uh, can do something about it. And I hope I can trigger you a little bit with what I'm going to show you. Um, my idea is to give you a glimpse of our works. And uh, let's do a kind of question answer Uh, after I'm done, it will take about half an hour uh, and then see how you would respond and feel free to ask me anything or to give any remark uh, about our projects, about us as architects working internationally and about us as architects as persons because they all are interrelated, have to do with each other and I'm curious how you are in it because you're much younger, much more fresh in the profession. Oliverio, do you see our screen? Do you see my screen? 
For yeah. now, I'm seeing you. Not the screen. Just you. Then I'm going to try to do it another time. And right now, you. And now the screen. I'm seeing you sitting in your chair, in your no. table. That's not so good. We just had it going. Just a moment. I'll try to do it again. This is better? No. Still not? No. Okay. Then something is going wrong. Just a moment. And right now? No. Still not. No. Okay, I'm so sorry. I see there is something going wrong, but I don't know what yet. No problem. Let me see. How can I take care of this? Well, before it worked. Yeah, it did. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna come I'm gonna come in just to see or maybe I'm gonna shut down the recording for a moment. Let's see if that helps. No. Nothing yet, eh? No. Fucking hell. This is disaster. No, I don't see the. Video. Well, they, they are telling me just a, a second. They told me there's a solution in the chat, but I don't see the chat here. Wait, new chat. A ver. No me sale. Que dicen.
They are telling me, sorry, that perhaps you have to open first the, the file you want to share and then rejoin the meeting. I'm going to give it a try, guys. It's something odd because I don't see the chat. They are sending me the chat on the on another side. Okay. I'm going to go out. I'm going to try again. Sí, por algún motivo, chicos, a mí no me sale el mensajito de chat. Así que si a ustedes sí les sale y alguien quiere hacer alguna pregunta o algo, eh, vi que a vos que te aparece, avísame y, y vamos haciendo las preguntas. ¿Sí? ¿Me escuchás? Sí, sí, Porque a mí eso bien. que me marcaste no me sale. Pero a cambio me sale lo del... Eh, admit. Me sale lo de poder hacer el, la traducción. Dale, bárbaro. Yo te aviso. Si sí, lo probamos todo antes de que entraran todos, se andaba todo perfecto. Creo que lo perdimos. Sí, yo también voy a salir, admítanme. Ahora me aparece el chat de vuelta. Pero la veo, te veo, Belu, enorme a vos y a Tomás, nada más. Apago la cámara, entonces. La parejita, justo. Como tiene que Fíjate ser. de pinear a otra persona y van a volver todos. Ah, mira, bueno, no, 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 no quería meter presión a nadie, ¿eh? Eso sí, eso sí. Entidad de relación, Tommy. Gracias, boludo. Lo de Tommy, estás hablando. Microsoft Teams. Yo eso ya lo tengo bajado porque lo usé para otras reuniones. Eh, pero vos después tenés que mandar un link para que nosotros nos sumemos. Sí, hey, yo sé. Che, ¿alguien vio si está Franz? ¿Alguien vio? ¿Y Amy? Sí. Creo que estoy de vuelta. Me tomó un tiempo. Right. ¿Vamos a intentar y empezar a ir, chicos? ¿Estás bien? Okay, so now we are seeing you. Very good. And now I'm going to share my screen. If I can get to it, just a moment.
Franz, I don't. I think I mute you by mistake. Not anymore. Do you see my screen? Not anymore. Sir. Now, yeah, we are seeing the presentation. Perfect. That's amazing. Shall I go ahead? Yeah. Okay, guys. So sorry. I don't know what happened, but that's that's the communication and technique. Um, okay, we're talking about um, architecture. And with Oliverio, I decided to talk about like experimentation to see where our job will take us in the coming future. Um, and this has to do anything with what you did the past semester, but especially where you're heading for in the coming, let's say, 10 years. And let's see uh, how you think uh, I'm right in that. So you in studio. UN Studio is a Dutch office from origin, but we're international. We are based in uh, Germany, in Frankfurt, and Shanghai, in Hong Kong. And we have about 300 people working with us. And these people are all young international from different parts of the world, and we're working worldwide, not in Argentina for now, pivotally enough. What we say as UN Studio, we say that we design with the knowledge that we create. Um, and the knowledge is being used as kind of data. And with that data, we can better design, more adaptive to the clients and for certain more adaptive for the people because that's what we're doing it for. We're not developing architecture per se for the client, but for the end users, the people that are gonna utilize it, that are gonna experience it <clears throat> and from which the life will be enriched by utilizing that. Keep that in your mind. What we do in the office is um, we created kind of this living lab in the office by having platforms. And these platforms create collaborative curiosity, we say. So any project that we do, we think about making, but especially about innovating, pushing the bar into a certain direction. And in the studio, we have an ecosystem for that. We made sure that when we talk about design, we always talk about knowledge too. And by utilizing knowledge, uh, logistics, organization, parametrics, uh, but also technology embedded in architecture, we can lay the foundations of the future of our profession. An architect is not only about built environment. Architect is about so much more. It's about academic, it's about experience, it's about development of bigger cities, bigger projects, but also being involved in politics. We do have an office that, of course, also has this wonderful analog approach where we have a model room where we study with our people the direction that we take and of course, always test the spatial quality of anything that we develop. Like the Mercedes-Benz Museum that you see over here on the left top right, for which we used in the 2003 sport, the most sophisticated software, but which of course right now is something that most of us uh, as young architects can do by utilizing the right scripts and the right parametric settings. But to enrich that, we actually take care of developing more than only the program, the software that creates the architecture. We create a product and this product we do with the client and the specialists that we utilize to create something new, a vision that we can test. So we say we listen to everybody that is involved, especially your client, but also to the rest of the stakeholders. We share knowledge between ourselves, the client stakeholders, but also the specialists that we invite. And we collaborate with them. We collaborate in such a way that we can get feedback on what we thought about, on what we are discussing, and we utilize that to create a product in the end. And by creating that product, whether it's a piece of city, whether it's a product that we can sit on like a chair, or whether it's a building, we can test and prototype and by getting information back from the testing and prototyping, we can actually gain knowledge again that we can put back into our data platform and utilize for the next round. And what is wonderful, social media, of course, 
is a, a, a very good tool to test kind of the interaction of built environment with the ones that are utilizing it. And not so much even the ones that are daily over there, but especially the regular visitors or the one-time visitors. They have an opinion, they utilize uh, the piece of built environment and we utilize their kind of knowledge or feedback on it. So if we talk about agile environment, so right now we all know that we're in a mode in which we think, okay, this COVID crisis or this economic dip, what is the uh, repercussion on our job, on our way of thinking about the world? And we say, look, we don't know yet exactly, but for sure what everybody will ask us is to create a more healthy environment and especially a more agile environment. Uh, projects that are not static, but that can transform over time. And that's something that we're looking into already for a lot of years and loads of books have been written about it. But we're really thinking that we're standing on the verge of creating cities and built environments around that adaptive environment. And we do so in the studio, in different studies, uh, competitions, projects, but also in more academic institutional studies. And we try to look for new challenges, how to create holistic environmental strategies, not only low carbon in energy use, not only biodiversity in the fact that we create biophilia that support us and materials that come from natural settings, but also the urban comfort that it gives us. So the way we live in cities is the base of trying to find the balance between low energy use, biodiversity and health. We know that there is transition in infrastructure. Mobility is changing. Right now we know all about electrical cars. We know that soon there might be automated cars, uh, but it's a whole mix of mobility that we're having to look at. Trains, trams, uh, cars, but also drones, the way uh, Amazon and smaller and newer um, uh, distributors will bring packages to us. And that will give us new ways of looking at mobility and with that new ways of looking at the city. And this is two hubs that we created in front of the city of Amsterdam that can store energy and can make sure that cars are reloaded. And from those hubs, we can create a new way of dealing with the highway because it can be much more versatile in the sense of changing the one direction to the other direction because anyway, there is more automated uh, transport and with that, even creating new grounds to build on for more residential or more mixed use development. Also, what is interesting is that we are looking at food security. We all know that right now we're still flying up and down to bring uh, the steaks from South America to Europe all around the world. And we bring the lettuce maybe from the Netherlands back to South America. Um, we're working in the Middle East and there everything is important, imported. And we think that any city around the world, any major city will look into its own self-sustainability. And we see that also in your projects, you take or you anticipate on that and you find ways of taking that integral into any quest for a new city. So we're experimenting with new topologies, but I think we should also experiment with individually tailored design. And in this case, sensorial design, because if we want to create urban comfort and more tailor-made comfort for the individual, we have to look at what it can do with us. What is built environment having for an effect on us? And here on the left, you see a car, the interior of a car. If you buy one, which is a bit old school, I know, but some people still buy cars, the car is tailor-made for you. So your chair, your wheel, your dashboard, everything in the cockpit 
will be adapted to you as a person. And the next person using it can with little switches adapt it to its own style, its own body, its own kind of comfort. And we feel with combining that with the discourse that we had in the architecture, we can actually take a new step. And UN Studio is already experimenting with this for a long time. We like to think in small objects, small environments that create kind of experience of the people that visit it. And with that create kind of a, a reflux of that visit feedback that we can again utilize. This is a holiday home in which people were invited to share memories of what they saw when they visited this in relation to what they would experience when they would go on a holiday. And these kind of pavilions, they make sure that we can interact with the individual needs of people. This is one that we did in Sao Paulo in your neighborhood, the U-turn pavilion, which created six themes within that made sure that there would be a discourse within that pavilion. And with that discourse, we will talk about how people feel, what kind of goals people will have in the near future, and how to adapt those goals inside this exhibition. And what we're heading for is something different. Right now, we're looking at architecture that we can measure. And we did that in Milano, in, in, the, in North Italy. Uh, we put on the Salona di Mobile, the big exhibition in 2017, uh, another pavilion that would work with the senses and that would be able to reset your mind and reset the way you felt at that moment. And if we talk about stress, about the way we feel often with the situation that we're in by the crisis or some examination, but also in work and even private, there is so many times that we lose our focus because we're stressed out, we feel not at ease and we cannot generate enough kind of feedback because we feel like that or we're producing even too much and we have to focus back. And what we did with this pavilion, we invited people to take part and to let their senses flow throughout that pavilion. So we created a visitor's experience in which the user flow would go through different stages. We would first scan somebody in its entirety, so its body. We would connect wearables to the heart and the brain so we could measure kind of the substances that would be produced by the body and the brain activity that it gives. We would create this passive experience walking to uh, the pavilion and then make sure that with light, sound and tactility we can actually create a different environment. And we would do this twice within this pavilion and then give feedback to the persons via the mobile software. And what was interesting is that by monitoring these thoughts that we call and by giving those stress reduction experiences and by using wearables that would monitor uh, the people's bodily uh, processes, we could give uh, personalized feedback in how you would respond to this. And by using different light tones, by using different tactility and using different acoustics, we can actually make sure that we can enhance stress, but also relax stress and make sure that we can focus better and have better ideas of how we have to interpret our environment and how we can deal with that. And here you see Ben van Berko, our chief architect, being part of that reset and seeing what it does to him, and what kind of environment we would need. And this is a small experiment. And by measuring it and by creating this open platform in which you share this data with the ones that took part in this experiment, we can also build the confidence with the people that we built for and that we designed for um, by taking part in this. And right now we're doing uh, a smart district in the Netherlands, which I'm not allowed to see you yet, show you yet, which 
has the same tools to create the engagement of people and utilizing their data in an open platform. I wanted to show you something different, the living building, which we did in 2019 for the city of Milan. It's a competition for the extension of city life. That's a central development in the city of Milan, where already three towers were existing, one of uh, Hadid, one of Liebeskin, and uh, one of Sasaki. And this central development needed its last push and for that, the client wanted to have a mix of office and hotel um, stay and public use. And what we told them is that to make sure that it can contribute to this uh, development, to this existing kind of very high end commercial environment, we need to embed it in the city and we need to make sure that it answers to the whole set of conditions that we ourselves as architect give that the city gives in the design guiding principles in the fact that the developer itself wants to have connection to the community that they're building for and of course to the certification on the left the lead zero the fact that we want to make sure that we're carbon neutral that we are circular with water use and waste use and for that, we said, why don't we create a healthy environment? Why don't we make sure that we create kind of a living organism that is adaptive and that makes sure that there is no outdoor and indoor in a way, and there is no office or a hotel or public. Everything is intertwined. Everything creates this kind of notion of human centric and creating surprises where people will take part and will trigger kind of return and discovery. And by taking into account also the requirements of the city and the fact what we talked about before, the smart mobility and the creation of this development, not only on its own piece of ground, but in a much larger realm of city life and the city, we can create kind of much more smart, adaptive use of transport means. So we don't have to build these big parkings. We don't have to create parkings where you can only come and move away with your car again. You can share cars. You can make sure there's automated um, transport. That means that the footprint of the whole building by only getting there is already getting less. The buildings themselves become future ready by utilizing the energy that is stored already on that premise, the district heating, for instance, the discharge wells underground, and the central collection tanks for waste that we can use within the whole environment. And then by utilizing the different installations inside the buildings, which make the building smart and as neutral energy consumption as possible. And by integrating these circular means, of rainwater harvesting, of irrigation with that water, of condensed water utilization. You can create actually two cycles of water use within the building. And by combining that with the produce that is possible within the buildings, the urban farming, the utilization of waste, the vegetation that we can return back into the cycle, we can actually add this to the energy consumption and make sure that we can get it as resilient and as neutral as possible. And with that, we can create this human-centered design, this whole loop around people utilizing urban and architectural environments in its sustainableness, in its regenerativeness, and it's in, in its restorativeness. So this is not only part of the hidden character of this development, but it actually creates a high identity for this development, which is the part of the whole show of this development. And by showing this partially also in the external envelope, we can actually make sure that it makes sense to work with a facade, with an envelope that is built out of this clay ceramics, a very cheap, but durable facade material combined with a high uh, tech um, PV panel that is 
and very efficient, but also creates a different attitude of the building and make sure that we can create energy also. And then the transition of what is happening on the inside and towards the outside, the urban concept, the fine grain that we have inside, by adding that to the landscape and making sure that this landscape is versatile within the seasons, but also within the years, we can actually create a full environment that makes sure that we're in this organic setting, that it is versatile for the coming 10, 50 years. A very detailed research that we did in a different part of the world is a water generating pavilion. Um, very specific uh, to make sure that we can show the clients that there is something hidden in that area that we can utilize and that is not utilized yet. And this was a competition for the sustainability signature pavilion in the Dubai Expo 2020 that has been postponed until next year. 2021, and they asked us to think about the future of sustainability in this region. And we all know when you go to a desert climate that it's extremely hard to think of what can be sustainable, what can have a character that brings down the energy consumption and possibly even transfers it to a positive use. So what we did, we proposed a water producing pavilion. And the water production is done with something that is all in all of your laptops and computers, an element that makes sure that we can get moist out of the air and transfer it to water, to liquid. And by utilizing that liquid, and by this pavilion, we could utilize about 16,000 liters per day in this region. We can make sure to have a water cycle, but we can also make sure to utilize uh, the rest of the water to create its own environment. Uh, but of course, by utilizing this technique, we had to create a pavilion that would be different than a normal building. And for that, you have to adapt. And the urban farming that we integrated in this pavilion, we located underground to make sure it doesn't have to withstand this harsh environment above ground. And above ground, we could create these wetlands where people would, in the warm months, have a different experience outside the pavilion, where we would create green in the desert. And as you can see over here, the PV panels on the roof and in the landscape work together with the facade that would create this water generating. And by utilizing parametric design, we could measure the amount of electricity that we needed to generate um, the water producing skin. And by utilizing certain inclinations and services and depths of this skin, we can actually produce this balance of electricity and water generating that would take care of this whole pavilion during eight months. Mm -hmm. And what is wonderful is that within the pavilion in the interior, the money shot would be creating weather with the electricity that we would catch by the PV panels and creating this electricity, um, the thunder and lightning and the water vapor that we would get from the skin. So we could create weather during this uh, expo in the middle of the desert. So another example of doing this, but then realized or in realization is a high rise that we did also in Dubai. Because your um, last semester or last um, uh, practice was defining a high rise. So I wanted to get back to that and make sure that you can relate to it. All of these aspects of what we talked about is also embedded in this one, but then in a different manner. This is a high rise in Dubai the Wassel Tower, opposite the Burj Khalifa, which is still the highest tower in the world. Um, and we created a 300 meter high tower for our client that is sustainable in its own right in this region. Um, the tower is conceived as an ever-changing silhouette, looking all the directions in the city towards downtown, towards the old center, and towards the desert and the seas. 
And by creating this envelope, we could create a very sustainable um, model that would uh, adapt to their orientation to the way the sun is shining during the summer as well as during the winter and make sure with very simple adaptive use of water and PV to create this holistic approach on how to save energy, cooling and heating about 30% less than average in the UAE. And actually the prototyping that we did in the parametric model was kind of simple. We said if we have a base skin of glass and opaque, um, and we have another veil on top of that skin in the shape of um, shading fins, we can actually adapt this building in such a way that it can respond to this 360 orientation in the sun. And by having this parametric model, we could involve it and make sure it's also constructible. Because of course, we can conceive everything as architects within the computer, but we have to make sure that it's rationalized and adaptive to the budget and to the way we're going to construct it. So these are some shots of the parametric model with this rationalized thin design that is adapted to this skin of glazing and opaque panels. And with it, we can actually create this model that would reduce the amount of heating and at the same time reduce the amount of wind going down the building by creating these kind of central spirals around that fin and also bringing more daylight into the building by reflecting the light from that skin or these shading fins into the interior of the building. And here you see the rationalized photos, the construction that is ongoing. And on the right, you see these shading fins still not on the facade, but being prepared. And what is nice is that these shading fins are produced of ceramics, local produce that we make sure that are glazed. And by glazing them and locking them into an aluminium uh, cast, we can make sure they are durable in these sandy conditions, in these salty conditions, and in this hot condition. So it's not only sustainable in the sense that it treats the building well in its energy consumption, but it's also very durable and it can make sure that it can stand the test of time for about 20 to 50 to 100 years. And by detailing that wonderfully over here, these are mock-ups that we did, it also creates a wonderful quality. The last project that I want to take you through is something of an experiment, but which is also going into a further design stage. We did a competition last year, <clears throat> around uh, November, December, exactly a year ago. Um, it was a competition that we did for a health insuring company in Italy, and they invited us to take a look at the suburban area north of Milan. And we saw an opportunity to think about this healthy living in a master plan scale. And this was last year, November. So don't forget, it was before the COVID time. So we were thinking about this. And Italy was hit hardest the moment we presented this project. Um, what we said to the client, why don't we, why don't we look into suburbia? in a new manner. Why don't we look into the future of healthcare? The client wanted to locate a small hospital in this suburbia and around this hospital create a residential area that would tap into the existing qualities and actually uplift the whole quality of that neighborhood over there. So we said, okay, let's take a look at how can we make sure that we create a community over there that is connected to each other. How do we make sure we integrate it with the natural environment over there? Because it's quite green in that neighborhood and we wanted to tap into that. And how do we make sure that we create kind of a network that make the people that are gonna live over there become connected and how to connect that to healthcare? We create a new architecture typology, we say, you have a hospital or a clinic, 
and you have residential. And why don't we connect the two and make sure that the target, uh, the targeted public that is going to take part in this residential development is also immediately connected to this health issue of staying fit, staying healthy, being taken care of, and making sure that um, your condition is always measured. And for that, we said, okay, maybe we can think of a recovery hospital, somewhere where you not only are cured of a disease, but also somewhere where people take care of you, where you can live in the neighborhood or live temporarily to make sure that you get into a good condition. And by showing this um, diagram to our clients and explaining to them that we are not only thinking about kind of this general approach of low carbon and biodiversity, the nature and the energy consumption, but also urban comfort, we can find a way to create a resilient neighborhood. And this resilient neighborhood can be about senses, about making sure that it's affecting healthy and behavioral decisions of people. It can be intergenerational. That means that you can live there as a family, but you can also stay there when you get older, or you can stay there or live over there when you have the need for a community. And it's an active neighborhood. So we want to enhance the people to move around, to work on their fitness, not per se by uh, being on the bike constantly, but by being able to walk, by taking mobility in the sense of cars outside of the neighborhood and making sure that people have to walk from house to house, from house to clinic, and from house to amenities. And the urban vision was done in such a way that we wanted to make sure that we create a community center, not so much the hospital, but the central element within the residential development that would act as recognizable elements and urban cataclysms, and making sure with the central amenity we can create micro neighborhoods of small communities that would be zones in which this healthcare living would be embedded. And by adapting our approach of architectural and urbanistic environment around that, we can create meaningful public space. So it's not only about you as individual or you as family being aware of your condition and of creating a healthy life, uh, living environment, but also about sensorial design adapted in the buildings, but also in the urban environment over here. And we thought that the backdrop, this green environment, would be the secret to people being adaptive in this, being welcoming this kind of health, healthy lifestyle environment. And we see that there is a lot of innovation in technology right now, but you need the right embedding in the spatial setup as well as in the user setup. And we have to make sure that if we utilize data from people in creating kind of a link to their healthy environment, we have to create an open platform, an open platform where people know what's happening to their data or with their data. So that means that we can create a business model that is not only about residential living or about residential healthy living, but about residential healthy living targeted to the individual, targeted to its platform. And that platform is not ruled by Google, not by Facebook or any other big tech company, but by the client and its users. So it's a protocol that makes sure that it's trustworthy. And by adapting this to the full neighborhood and from right to left, go from distributed hospital to rehabilitative, rehabilitative housing, to short stay care community or long stay care community and wellness community, we can create kind of a new business model that makes sure that not only the clients has different products to buy but, or to sell and buy, but also about a new group of people that think about living in a city in a different manner and living about in the future 
in a completely versatile environment. By having this kind of setting, we can actually think about every little space inside these houses, inside of the amenities, but also inside this green environment that might be able to increase productivity, that might be able to reduce the occupational disease by a lot of percentage, and by reducing kind of the allergy and the breathing problems that we have right now. And last, what I wanted to tell you is that presentation of this project, of this competition we did on the 18th of February in Milan. We flew to Milan with a small group of people and 18th of February, the first COVID patient was detected in North Italy or hospitalized in North Italy. And we just want to say that we as architects can think of so much what is happening in the future and make sure our clients are completely aware of the possibilities of what we as architects and specialists can give to them. And by that adapting future of healthy living, we can create a shift in focus, making sure that behavior of people are related to psycho, uh, physical environment, to social economic circumstance. It doesn't have to do anything with class or with rich or non-rich. It's something that we can create in different levels throughout society. And these components by now can become units that we can bring into build environment. And we're going to start the concept design of this uh, development in the coming month and create a new identity. This is what UN Studio does, and this is what we as architects, I think, should be interested in. Um, in UN Studio, we think not only on built environment, but also in urban environment. We think about forecasting, and we like to discuss this all with you. So I would like to ask you to have a quick response. Maybe there are some questions that you can tell me and ask me to make sure that we can go into your projects while I'm going to ask some of the questions that I post over here to you yourself. Anybody? <coughs> okay. Thanks, Franz, for, for the presentation. Uh, I will do it in Spanish so, so to promote the chicos, chicas. ¿Alguno tiene preguntas sobre la, sobre la charla? Franz, la verdad que es muy abierto para contestar, así que no sean para nada tímidos o tímidas. Who's going first? We have so many participants. ¿Qué tal? Hi, hello. Um, I, I would like to know or to ask um, the process of design, maybe from the starting point, when you get to know the client, you get to know the site, like how do you go through the, the steps to, to end up in the design stuff for we just so many things? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, guys. I, um, I, I want to emphasize that we as architects, we should try to be involved in a project as early as possible. Um, and in your study, you do that because uh, actually with your um, uh, moderator or teacher, you define together kind of the challenge that you want to take a look at. And we try to do the same as architects. Of course, we're invited by clients uh, to do commissions uh, or we're invited to do a competition or a pitch. And we always start with challenging the clients in finding kind of the right brief. Client always has a start for a project, a location where they want to build, uh, a brief what they want to build, and if they're a good client, they even have a vision already of about what it could become. Um, and by utilizing that and analyzing that, 
and taking a step back and using our own insight in what the world of cities or architecture or interiors or products might need, we can push the bar a little bit in the beginning and redefine the brief. So that's our first stage, redefine the project brief. And if we have redefined the project brief, we can define the first vision. And the first vision is only about ideas. What could the project become? What can it look like? And what is the internal knowledge that we could adapt to that project? And if that first vision is agreed upon with the client, then we can go to a design process of concept design, schematic design, and technical design. And then you in studio, of course, always tries to make sure to be involved in the stages that are going towards tender and execution to make sure that we can guard the quality of what contractor and client are developing and also listen to what the end users in the end can bring us back from the project. So that's kind of the ideal setting, but of course it doesn't always work like that. Any other question? What do you think about the reset part? Do you, do you think we as architects can make a difference in how people feel? I have a question about the, the shape of the buildings. I, want, I would like to know if uh, when, when you are in the process of design, you uh, try to merge uh, like a, an organic way uh, the shape of the building to feel like more natural, the, the placement to the, uh, sorry, uh, to the city. Like if, you, if you're trying to make like a more natural way to to put the building not so so like a uh, uh, tough and like a um, I don't know how to say it um, like it, if you try to 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 merge with the natural places uh, sorry, um, no it's just shall I shall I try to answer your question and and yes. tell me when I answered it, if I if I understood it right, um, what uh, what we do, uh, guys, is is of course we have a certain signature as architect, and that that means that we usually don't create square boxes um, for our buildings um, because we feel that the soft shape, kind of the more or organic approach. Um, feels more comfortable and more appealing to a lot of our built environment. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't make square boxes. I mean, of course, we make all kinds of different architecture. What is the secret be behind what we're doing is that we try to embed kind of the reasoning uh, behind the architecture in that shape or in that organic form. So if you look at the pavilion that is water generating, we don't do an inclined service for nothing. We do it to make sure that technically we can catch that water from the pavilion. We don't do a certain shape out of nowhere. We do that to house the program or in the case of the pavilion to make sure that we can catch enough electricity on the roof by utilizing PV. Um, in the case of the tower in Dubai, we really wanted to respond on the city overall. So we saw that this node, this, this center point in which we created this high rise, where there is no high rise in the vicinity, makes that we have to adapt to the different directions. So we said, why not create a 360 degree building? And with that, we could easily try to incorporate the orientation and the benefits of the different orientation towards its energy consumption. So all of the decisions that we do take during design, they should have 
kind of a technical reasoning behind it. And at the same time, create, of course, a wonderful piece of architecture for built environment. Is that what you meant? Is that yeah, it? yeah. Yeah? Yeah, thank you. I would like to, to ask about three different concepts that you mentioned. Um, this is about technology, uh, the shape uh, Ivan uh, asked for, and also the political and the uh, environmental concept. Uh, all these buildings have a high technology response on their their construction, their parts, their their conception, and we we live in in a country where all these technologies are not uh, reachable. I don't know if if that's the the world the world that. Um, what do you think about using this this technology? The the use of this technology could approach uh, the the massive construction and, and all the world, not only the the, the first world where um, economical uh, aspect is like better than the third world. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a really uh, a good question or or discussion. Even I, I think I think for us architects, it shouldn't matter too much in which environment we we are asked to perform. Um, UN Studio is is uh, in very many different environments, and not only in first world but also second and, and even third world. We do. Uh, Project and smaller project. We we're having a project in in Nairobi in Africa currently um, for shelter for refugees. And what I thought was so nice about the Milan project, the healthcare project, is a very down to earth project. It's just housing, nothing really fancy. But what I think we should take in account as modern architects or modern people is that there is so much available in nature but also in the industry technology at this point becomes more um, approachable and more attainable ever i think that we by now whether you live in the first world or the second world or the third world you have the smartphone, you have the computer, and you can embed technology in your architecture. Whether then you would work with um, more basic um, building material or more basic shapes or lower rise because there's no uh, tendency to bring in high rise, uh, still you can embed that technology into the projects like we did in Dubai, look, Dubai, of course, is a modern city, but it's not modern city like you have in North America or in Asia, or even I think uh, Buenos Aires as a modern city. It's got its difficulties by the fact that not everything is available over there. They don't have infinite budgets. The budgets are still low. And we can do this tower over there because we chose for a very smart way of organizing the tower with this parametric system. And at the same time, choose for a base material to make kind of the um, formula for sustainability. This clay in, comparison, in combination with the aluminium and the glazing. I mean, this is basic way of dealing with architecture in which you can achieve a lot, we think, even when the budget is not that high. Thank you. I'd like to ask about senses, about the first, the first images that you showed about 
how technology can sense or can control the people. Don't you think that is kind of negative in, in a way because you are kind of standardizing people, uh, understanding that we all feel the same and through a certain of values that the computer will be given to you, uh, will respond in a certain way. And if I'm sad, maybe it will, will yeah, I don't know, uh, turn on a light, but what I need is another thing. And don't you think that technology maybe in some way <clears throat> it's negative to people and maybe we need to reconnect, but with nature uh, and what making like an certain analysis of ourselves that maybe any computer can do or make, I don't know. Yeah, I, I understand your question. Um, I think that, that of course, we, we always have to look back where we came from or who we are as individuals. Um, and, and I think that counts for everybody, uh, whether they live in a city or outside of the city and whether they live in Amsterdam or Buenos Aires. Um, but we, we as architects, we strongly believe in, in opportunities. Um, and if opportunity arrives in which technology can create a richer environment for the individual, then we should embrace it. We should utilize it in such a way that we can control it instead of other industries getting to control us as architects or our built environment. So for us as, as you in studio, but I think for you guys uh, who are just starting the profession, um, it should be tempting to look into it and not to shy away from it and leave it to other people. Um, the fact that I explained to you that what we think about uh, dealing with data and creating this healthcare environment in which we don't utilize the big tech companies, but we utilize our own system together with uh, the client and the users, means that we can propose to utilize technology in a different way than we're used to. It's not the data tapping, the harvesting of everybody without knowing where it's going to. It is making the right agreements among each other, what we can do with the behavior that we as people have and how can we enhance the quality of life by looking into the data of that behavior. And it's even so, I feel, is with that you can either tap into a better relation of ourselves towards the natural environment, because that is integral part of our living habitat. So if we can see on our smartphone what we do to our environment in the direct vicinity of us, and we see what the environment does with us in the sense of creating better air, less pollution, better acoustics, uh, a more comfortable life, and I think the balance that we're looking for already for a long period will get better and better. What do you think? Do you agree? Uh, I think that it has its pros and cons because uh, people are like, well, are like nature and sometimes we try to control it uh, or try to understand it uh, or understand it and we may try to control uh, like everything as human always uh, does. Um, so we have to be very careful with that, I believe. Yeah, I, 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 I see where you're coming from, of course. And I, I think it's beyond doubt that we should not want to control everything. Um, and I think what what I showed over here, it's not so much about control 
as much as it is about awareness and learning and education. Um, and to learn and educate and be aware, you have to control a certain part because that's the part that you can transition into information to the ones that you're doing projects for. So there is, there is this fine balance of what you want to explain and what you don't want to explain. And maybe that's what your emphasis is about. What, what is the piece that we don't want to explain? But it could be anything, of course. Hello, Franz. OK, thank you. First of all, thank you uh, for doing this. And also thank my, our teacher, my teacher, Oliverio. And let me ask you, uh, if we, the architects, can do all of this stuff, what's the roof? Of, of, of if we are the owners, can we? If we solve the money thing, how far can we grow and when we can actually implement this technology in society? Yeah, we need we need clients for that because architects never do it for themselves. We always do it for the other people, um, and for the other people. Um, we need triggers. We need uh, a municipality that will ask us. We need a developer or an investor or a school or university that wants to take this further. Um, and, and maybe what is interesting is that nowadays we as architects can also try to trigger projects by setting up a development company or initiating uh, research. Um, and maybe most of all, although we're a business, of course, we as architects, UN Studio has to make money to pay the people that work over here. Um, we do share a lot of that knowledge with the bigger environment, with the institutions, the schools, but also with our colleagues. And I think if we do that more or less collectively, and we, we, we can kind of change the, the way that cities or governments make decisions for their subjects, for us as people that live in that country or that area, then we can make a real change. And it's by presenting how far we can go. So I, I, think, I think that it will always be a challenge to conceive an idea to be able to explain that idea properly, to raise the funds with which we can make the idea come true, and then actually making it come true in such a way that it also works. That's the big challenge of being an architect. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Or shall we go to your projects? Uh, I, more than a question, just a, a remark on on your presentation and and the project. Um, I think a, a really nice and interesting thing about what you show is also that well, to this class today you you concentrate more, I think, in inspiring in a way. And I think that's a really interesting. I'm I'm uh, trying to connect it with the last thing you said. That I think one of the things as architects we can do with our projects and with our voice is also to to aspire to inspire, no? To inspire other people to to share our vision. In this case, your vision, but I mean uh, uh, as an industry perhaps, and. And one thing that perhaps today it was not uh, so um, you didn't point out so much, but it, it showed in the in the in the images that I think that even though you work with a, a many large scale projects and many times as the Wasser Tower, it has an impact on the on the skyline. The, the office is always very uh, aware of the situation of the of the walking people of the pedestrian of the other scale. 
So not only, I mean, you can make an iconic building or or, 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 or like a sculpture or whatever, but it, it's always the other dimension of the of the people. And today you also introduce the scale of the nature uh, of this symbiosis. So it's not just to create, of course, what I understood of, of of your presentation, it's not just about making like a notable or iconic building anymore, as perhaps in a few years ago, but more of like a like something that it's embedded in the world, in nature, with the people. Uh, something that's not so clear to identify what is what, and but considering the the soft side of the of the architecture. As well as the as the hard, no, because you show the the fins and very technical. But um, I, I don't know. I, I think it's perhaps something that we are almost very far away sometimes, and it's very interesting. At least for me, I I, I just wanted to point it out to the students. Yeah, you know, I I think. That, that's, that's exactly what, what I wanted to point out. Look, it's not about projects uh, anymore. Uh, of course, if you talk about creating a business out of architecture, it's still about projects. But it's about uh, a, a way of looking at the world. And our way of looking at the world um, is, is getting more complex by the day with all the social media, all the information that we get, uh, and the overwhelming amount of, of attention that it uh, generates and we also it's it's very hard to pinpoint what is architecture exactly i mean we just talked about what we see as a commission from start to to end uh, but of course architecture is much more than that it's it's our life it's our passion and if we can project that on our environment and we can project it consistently on our environment and always pinpoint that it's about the people that we're doing it for, we can create together a better world. And that's a bit idealistic, but I think uh, it is time that we recognize again um, why we build cities and why we build architectural environment. Why did we choose to go for this profession? That's because we have a uh, a social position that we cannot deny, that we always have to emphasize. Um, and that's why it's good sometimes not to talk about the projects on itself, but more about the people that are traveling and making the journey through these projects. Hi, maybe related with this uh, last question. Um, when going through all your projects or the projects you show us today, um, you show how these projects are related with nature and, and each country. But all these projects are in different parts of the world. Um, and this relationship you show, it's uh, different when it's uh, maybe in Asia or Oceania or Europe or the US. Um, which are the main concepts uh, you take in account when projecting a uh, building in different countries? Because it's not the same for doing one in Asia than one in Europe. No, I, I think I think there is look there there is a, a clear direction that we as office take uh, how we how we move around the world with our style of, of architecture. And partially that is what, what Oliviero just said. Look, if you talk about an iconic building, why would you hire you in studio? Or why would we get the chance to do a project for you? That's because we, we want to give you something inclusive. So it's a building that makes sense and that fits in its environment and make sense in the fact that we feel it has to be sustainable in its energy consumption, uh, sustainable in the way it deals with people. Um, but it has to be locally rooted. And that is because it's always a public and cultural element in any realm. 
So that means that we always have to look at which are the people that are going to utilize it, which are local most of the time, and how are they going to utilize it, and what is the interaction with kind of the city or the other built environment, which is local. So doing this analysis of where we are, picking some elements out of that that have to do with this sustainable, technological, cultural aspect makes that we can always relate the project into the different realms that we're building. Shall we go to uh, your projects, guys? Not to forget them. Yes. Yeah? If anybody, si nadie tiene más preguntas, pasamos a, a ver los proyectos. ¿Sí? Bueno. So, yes, uh, I, I will just make um, I will just make a short uh, cut. Uh, yeah. not, not cut, but just a, a small thing in Spanish. Um, bueno, a todos los que estuvieron, muchísimas gracias. No, no, no los vamos a echar ni nada. Por supuesto, se pueden quedar, porque aparte estaba, creo que es interesante poder escuchar un review de, de alguien como una crítica, como alguien de como Franz. Pero bueno, ahora vamos a pasar a los a, a, a los trabajos que estamos haciendo en, en Arquitectura 4. Eh, los chicos de Arquitectura 3 van a tener la corrección un poquito más adelante con Marta. Pereira del estudio MMBB, que ya, ya nos dio una clase hace un, un mes y pico. Así que, nada, de vuelta, gracias por, por, por la atención y por participar. Y todos más que bienvenidos para ver lo que también estamos haciendo en el, en el taller. Um, Franz, sorry for that. Okay. I was just telling the, the, the audience that because we, we, you know, we have some people from outside the school or different chairs and the two different courses. So I was explaining that we now are, are um, going to see the, the works of, of of the students of, of the morning. See. Nadie escuchó nada de lo que dije, sí. Hace 10 segundos se cortó. Así. Ah, sí, 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 sí. Los chicos de la tarde igual creo que está bueno que, que se queden porque el, el tema en sí, si bien la escala es distinta, el tema que estamos manejando es el mismo. Así que creo que, 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 que nos va a servir. Um, so now yes, uh, we can start. Uh, again, thanks for the, for the presentation. And I don't know if you want to pick yourself, I pick or we pick together. It's up to you. Let's let's do it together, uh, Oliverio. And maybe maybe I can uh, pose uh, a question to the ones that we pick. Uh, yes. And 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 the question is, if we look at the presentation that I just gave, uh, in which we, in which I try to make clear how we deal with the projects, if it concerns how the user will experience it and what quality can we bring into the project to enhance kind of this user's experience. Um, how, what can you tell about your project that looks at that? What is the experience of the individual user of your project? What is the backbone of that? And maybe we can start. Oliviero, I take the first one. Okay. Ad Adamo Fiorito. All right. Um, I, I will. I don't know how to share it from. Do you know how to share? We try everything. Tenés, but tenés un eh, un cuadradito con una flecha que dice compartir pantalla. Y ahí hace clic. PowerPoint bros. Uh, bros. Team ¿Ahí? channel. No. Ahí bandeja de uso compartido. No, no, but perhaps, but chicos, perhaps you can. Can you browse your own uh, the, the padlet I, I show you? Your screen? Because I cannot share my screen. Oliverio, ¿crees que nosotras mostramos la pantalla o...? Pero vos tampoco vas a poder compartir la pantalla. Ah. 
No, 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 prefiero porque si no cada uno lo va a hacer, no se va a terminar nunca. Allow, wait. Screen sharing. You find it? I'm on it. We need permission to share your screen. Security, private, screen recording. Wait. Screen. Screen recording. Yes. Wait a second. Here. We'll not be able to record the content until it is quit. I think I will have to quit. Oh, wait. You quit. Okay, I think now I can do it. Yes. All right. Okay. Now you see? Yes. Okay. Sí, ahí se ve. Es el de más arriba, Oliverio, si puede ser. Es, está justo arriba. Otro? Sí. Oh. No se puede eso, no se vale, como dicen los chicos. Ok. ¿Se ve, chicos? Sí. Frank, can you see? Yes, I can see it. Right. Can you, can you tell something about it? Yes, hello, here we are. Paki, do you want to start? Yes, the idea of the, of the building that we are designing is to, to design it for a community that lives in next to the river with all the characteristics of the kind. Perdón, yes. chicos, ¿se pueden mutear todos los que no sean los que están hablando? Así como algo, ¿no? Sí, por eso. Yes, we recognize that th that's the like the graphic of our idea. We recognize that the place, um, we recognize a community um, living next to the river. So we wanted to take this characteristic like uh, the wetland or um, the biodiosphere or uh, the way that people live in the river to a yeah. People live horizontally next to everywhere, and we want to take this characteristic to vertical and create a place where people live in, like in the river, but in a vertical community. So we detected some features that the river has, for example, the constant and um, very stretched uh, relationship with nature. Uh, some, for example, noise, some uh, like ways of living, of like uh, living next to the green is different than living in a context of uh, dense urban, dense urban center. So we conceived the the we conceived this tower by instead of making a full uh, block, we uh, change the idea and make that the, the the tower is like an empty place when uh, people live in these like capsules. So the the environment 
the, the tower is a full uh, air environment and people live in this. Uh, the closest place are these capsules and the other places of the tower are air. So the idea is to, as we are next to the river, is to create a system that collects the water from the river and transport it to the whole building. So like this, like it's shown in the in this sketch, we have the water that goes vertically uh, to all these uh, slabs, hydroponic slabs. So the water will go beneath the, beneath the slabs, uh, allowing all the nature and vegetation to grow with this water. And with this, uh, people will live among nature and all that this, uh, that this will do. So above this, this hydroponic slab, we created a system of jets and capsules where the, where the people will live. I don't know if it's clear. We can go to the pictures that... Uh, There we can see that this idea of living like in capsules where uh, nature uh, and water uh, are all along the building. Yeah. Hey, I, I really, I really like the project and, and the, the drawings are beautiful. What, what is the meaning of the green on these levels? How, how do you want to deal with that for the community? We have different types of green. This um, we created like a system of um, plants where you can produce, and above that level there are plants where um, uh, that products are commerce commercially stated. <laughs> um, so the idea is to adapt these green spaces to different programs. For example, we have some uh, living spaces where. Um, the access to the to the, to the different houses are like in a low scale where the green is all around or in the hotel the hotel rooms are all around uh, this um, this vegetation that grows uh, from these hydroponic labs and also we uh, we are proposing that we have these um, whole floors that are hydroponic um, hydroponic orchards where the production will grow for the whole season. Hey, and, and one more thing that I wanted to ask. I, I think it really is appealing, kind of the environment. It's, 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 it's not like a city, but it's more like different villages up in the air. How is it, how is it standing on the ground? What is the quality of how, how do I get to my apartment? Yeah, we we thought about like a, a vertical. Yeah, to know that. Yes, we have like a, a main circulation with these uh, transparent elevators. And then we have like secondary paths where people can in different uh, velocities uh, move from one side to another. Perdón, la pregunta es, ¿cómo llega el edificio al, al piso? O sea, tienen toda esta comunidad vertical súper linda, sí. pero ¿cómo, ¿cómo esto se refleja en, en el acceso? I was translating your question, sorry. Yeah. Uh, we have, um, we divided the program, uh, the, the lower plants, we have, uh, we have the theater, or the, yes, I think that, is theater the word. We have the theater in the lower plan and we have some, some uh, bars and cafes and then we have the, um, uh, we have, um, we have, yes, places for workshops and offices. So in a way we, we are like um, making the building go from public to more private and in that way we connect with um, with the local we have also the um como se llama we have a mercado the lower market. plan yes yeah. a market 
where you can uh, commercialize like we make that relationship uh, uh, from the market and the puerto and the port of a city and we place the market in the lower plan and that is the place where you can commercialize things that uh, we grow on the tower mm -hmm. that's the like the external I connection with, with the content and, and one last question. How many people live in the tower? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, um, try to estimate. Like, um, the program is, I, I will have them. We don't, I don't know either, to be honest. The mega. program is about the Wasser Tower. The size of the tower, it's about the Wasser Tower. Uh, 300 meter high. Yeah, 300, uh, 10% yes. more. But we, we changed some parts and we put, uh, apart from the hotel, all this market area and the, the farming, the communal farming. Uh, but still it's like, a, it's a lot of people. It's a very unprofessional and unacademic answer mine, but a lot. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's, it's always good to ask yourself for how many people you are designing because if you have these if you have this tower for so many people which is about i think about 2000 people are living over here or 1500 uh how many central amenities do you need to create communities because 1500 people is too big to have to be one community you need more kind of neighborhoods within your building Yes. We we have some of those projects that are divided more than in program in neighborhoods, as you yeah. call them, where you have different, you have everything repeated like many, many times. I nice. don't know, 10 times, yeah. 12 times. Yeah. What I like of this one, I don't know what you think about this, that if you, in this sense of aspiring or inspiring or both, that the whole building, it's something that it's very aggressive, perhaps any building with the nature, but this is also trying to cope with the idea of remediation. So it can be like a machine that integrates with the river deltas, the delta of different rivers, yeah. and it could be sort of a, a system that could be repeated in the Mississippi or in the Nile or whatever, in which the building also is for the people, but to make the water and the environment a little bit better. That's what I like about this one. Yeah, yeah. And, and the funny thing is, it's it's actually kind of a, a, a traditional concept. You used to have these, big, these huge water towers in the city where they would pump water up um, in the night hours and then let it flow down to go into the distribution net. And over here you can do the same, but now you don't feed the city, but you, you feed the apartments over here and the gardens. So it's a, it's a really interesting concept. There's much more to it, I think, than, uh, than we see right now. It's a lot to think about. Yeah. Okay, shall we, shall we go to another one, just to make a bit of a comparison? Yeah. We, if you just to take the concept of the of the neighborhood, I think we can see this one. I don't know what's happening. I, uh, it's very slow, but uh, expand post perhaps it works. It's yeah. your computer. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the last MacBook Pro, but still it's uh, very far away. Perhaps it's that. There you have. Chica uh, Setan. Sí, yo, yo estoy. Bueno, no sé quién es yo. No les reconozco la voz todavía. Felicidad. Bueno. A explicar sobre todo el tema este de la diferencia, espero que siga estando, ¿no? De lo de los barrios que está hablando él, como para poder comparar. Sí. Um, right. we, do I have a lot of noise? Sí, un montón. Sí, es que hay una obra. A ver, sorry. 
That's all. All right, then in English. She's going to close the door because it's uh, there's a construction nearby. It's better now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we started with with the idea of creating like uh, these neighborhoods that can interconnect between them. So instead of being um, one um, one only tower, it's like a connection of different um, neighborhoods where everything happens in all of them. So so you can you can live, you can um, a commerce, um, uh, um, the plant, uh, Prop, uh, yes, you can make profits, uh, plantation green. So, so all of the programs happen in the different um, neighborhoods that then uh, interconnect between them. That's kind of the idea. So every neighborhood happens in like uh, 12 uh, uh, pieces. Stories. 12 stories. Just, yes, um, and um, all of them have like a, are are different, but then they they repeat. So we have like six neighborhoods uh, along the three uh, hundred um, pisos. Story, como historia. Pero pisos. Ah, sí. floors, floors, floors. Floors or stories? Yeah. Ah, okay. Decime si bajo si subo. So, yes. Um, there, there we can see. Eh? The plants are a little bit strange. Yes, they are, um, they are like uh, sustained by three. Um, uh, the, this this circles como patas. Yes. Uh, and there are well, there are six different like. Typical plants, yes. And, bueno. Andate afuera. Feli, ¿qué pasó? No, to be no, eh, nothing. There. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was having a problem. So. This is what we were talking before, I think. How the tower gets in touch with the... How do you get to your places? No? Yes. Okay. So what's, what's below over there? What, how do you get into the building and what's happening over there? So how does it tap into the river or to the city? The idea was to generate like a connector space between the between the different parks from the city, like a, a transition, a space from transition that connected the two, the two parks, the one that, that was in front of the building and the one that was in front of the river. Because we have a green from one side and the other one of the implant, there we can see a, a big park, yes. So we wanted to, to create this, this uh, space of transition and at the same time, a space that invites you to get into this building. So we were designing like um, these uh, green spaces in um, in our ter terrain. And then at the same time, uh, uh, some ¿cómo digo? cerramientos. Windows. Enclosure. Yes, enclosures to, to separate uh, what uh, the building and what is the park, the public space. Hey, and if you if you have this multiple times six types of neighborhoods in your building, uh, which yes. is what is what is the interrelation of the people that, that make use of the tower? Do they do they live and work? and use amenities in the tower or do you see a clear connection to the urban fabric so do they have to go out to go to the shopping or to the office or anything else 
No. Or the, the, light in the, tower. the idea that is that each village has its own part of office and uh, market amenities, but at the same time, that each village is different from the other ones on that. So in several locations, one can go from one village to the, to the other one to look for something. Okay, and what kind of facade do you think the tower should have? Or is it this? It's this plate with some glass in between. How, how do you see that? What is the design? Sorry, what kind of... Your of facade? What? Your the skin? La fachada. Fachada. Uh, no, it's just this... Uh, losas, what's the name? Slabs. These flats with the with the windows. So it's big, op big open terraces. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we were thinking of some some of these spaces to be opened, and then um, some of them uh, closed. So generating like different uh, spaces with the windows. It's it's, it's extremely generous the space. It's wonderful if I would have that as a as an inhabitant of the of the building. But it is it is kind of windy when you get up there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. We have to think in this. In this, I, I will repeat what I told them before. It's one of the ideas was that there were actually more than these three big columns. They were kind of the ones of the Mediateca, Mediatek in Sendai, with the Daya grid inside. Yeah. So perhaps 12 or something like that. And from each of these ones, you have these hanging communities, but they have to have like a double glazing, perhaps one for the for the units itself and one for controlling the climate or the weather or, the, or at least the wind in mm -hmm. the three, four first stories. It's like still in a in a concept phase, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, yes, we have to. Yes, to we treat thought that. of a of a di diagrid like surrounding the building, but no, no, uh, inside diagrid in uh, the okay, okay. Oh, We'll see in the class. But I think what Franz says it should be addressed. The the wind here, it's not possible to have everything open like in here because otherwise you are going to go flying to the Netherlands. Directly, okay. no scales. Yes. Very cheap. Yes, yes, we get it. Yeah, think think about the reasoning why it might be different in the lower part where it hits or where it stands in the city. Uh, I think you really gave it a good thought, so that's figured out. And then the top, and what is happening in between? Is there a variation that makes the quality of living in this uh, tower? difference on a higher floor than on a lower floor and a middle floor. Yes, and that will make uh, the villages even more different one from the other one. Yeah. I think it's also with that, not only because of the height, also with the, with the, um, how do you say, with the, if you're really thinking about neighborhoods, each neighborhood have in the city has its own identity. Yeah. Other are not neighborhoods; it's just a name, but are everything the same. And I think that concept still in, in being developed or should be developed more. I don't know what you think about that. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's what I see in, in most of the proposals that there is a clear identity of the the, the big. Uh, gesture, I would say, of the tower. But really, if you take the, and that's what we talked about, or that's what I wanted to talk about in the presentation, that always think about the individual and the experiences that you can offer the individual in the tower, which is something different than the big gesture. It's always a sequence of different spaces that um, an individual would like to experience, to be able to discover kind of the, the building. Maybe, um, Oliverio, if, if you don't yeah. mind, maybe, maybe we can take a look at uh, Get uh, Dino Kurov. Yes. 
uh, project, which which seems like it's a bit more detailed on a certain uh, level of the. Um, I was between design. that one and the one I opened. Now I go there just a second. Expand post. And, and sorry, guys, if I don't pronounce your name good. You pronounce it perfectly. Okay. Okay. To start. Pra, 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 pra. Okay. Okay. Por algún motivo no me deja. Qué desgraciado. El original. No, no. Es que Oye, no si no te puedo... conviene descargarlo en tu computador y compartirlo ahí. No, lo que hubiera convenido es que ustedes hagan los archivos del tamaño que les pedimos, sino que cada PDF pese 700 megas. Pero bueno, ya vamos a hablar en otro momento. Ok, so, um, first our approach to this project was to build a welcoming tower into our city. And we characterize Buenos Aires as a dense city with a green coastal front throughout its north, throughout its east and south sizes. With these sizes, uh, sites, sorry, ends directly on our lot that we're going to build in. So we propose to incorporate this green front inside our tower, creating new ways to circulate and live throughout the tower. Always having in mind, of course, this worldwide pandemic we're going through. So we're going to, to change. I don't know. Our, our habits will, are going to change forever and the, the, the ways of relating with with people and with ourselves are going to forever change. So one of the primers, primary gesture we are doing is to continue this previously mentioned uh, green front to and incorporate it as, as the heart or the core of our building. So this, this green heart will pump nature and give shape into its internal and outside uh, the form of our building, creating this vertical city. And when this heart beats, we say that like that, it creates green public floors that divide the tower, the tower's uses into small neighborhoods that are connected within themselves, always promoting this lifestyle, lifestyle of co-living and, and, and all of these spaces overlooks uh, into this green heart we are, we are planning. So this, no, each neighborhood has its capacity to isolate themselves, having these green floors that allows all the, its citizens to have an open, <clears throat> an open space floor for recreational purposes, such as community gardens and running fields, we have also planned an open-air theater and commercial roads that uh, without having the necessity, of course, of leaving this vertical city or, or these neighborhoods and exposing themselves to a possible virus in the future. Um, that was the, the presentation itself. I don't know to continue or answer the question that you, you gave us. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's it's a it's a really appealing uh, concept, guys. It's it's uh, super simple, and at the same time, uh, uh, it it calls on a lot of questions, of course. Um, so if if this if this central uh, area, this this long void, uh, is your central garden, what what is the what is the meaning of that garden? What are the different destinations that I can visit over there? Is it my own apartment, or is there a sequence of, of spaces that uh, are open to everybody? Uh, it depends on the use that you're going to give the tower. If you're going to go to the offices, or you have your department there, or you're going to visit the hotel, each single one of these programs has its own floor that hosts different amenities and are connected within ramps, which gives programs, public spaces, and place to recreate to people in the worst case scenario that we have to isolate ourselves. And, and how do I travel from, from floor to floor by an elevator, I guess? Is the elevator in, in the green space or not? We have elevators in the, we have two main cores that are going to be placed in the, how do we call it? Not in the green core, but in the building itself, because we, we would like to, to have this perception inside the building that wherever you are standing, you can watch this green heart, this green core, this green void, 
from from even the the ground floor until the upper floors. So we have different accesses in the in the base, which are more public, which goes directly to the commercial center, and then private ones which go from the base from for, from the core from the core sorry to the top. And if you would like to go to the tail, you have different accesses and but the the more public are the more public spaces and the circulations are on its base. So you you know exactly how you program the tower. Uh, why why don't I see that in the design? Where where is the hotel and where is the apartment? Uh, or if you can go a little bit up, yes. you place it uh, from more public from on its base to more private on the top. Uh, first starting with. Uh, the commercial space, which houses a ramp that we call the commercial road, which goes up some floors, which contain the commercial centers. Then we have the offices in in light blue. Um, over that we have the hotel, and above that the, the residences. All of them divided by by these green arteries, these big floors that foment people recreate to, to recreate. Yeah, I, I I I really like the concept, guys. It's 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 super simple, but it doesn't it doesn't have kind of strength enough. While this this mega void is super interesting, it doesn't have the discovery that that the project that we looked at before this one has, because it's it's a normal stacking, and you broke that stacking by creating this big void. Why why don't you create a bit? Either variation in the architecture, either variation in the programming of the, of the project, because this void is so wonderfully equipped to to recognize where you are and to create different kind of spaces for the different inhabitants. Yeah, if you see, I think we should see it in uh, in the section and try to to give more. I don't know, protagonism, I don't know how to say it, but to this green void and so this green void also houses these bubbles of green that are directed for each and every neighborhood and tries to be one with the tower, not just pile floors by floors with a void. I, I want to ask you something, Franz. Uh, regarding the works of the students, but also of, of your insight and, and your experience. I know, as you said before, you are in school and you have the you have a practice that has to, to make money as well, of course. Uh, the last year we studied really in depth the Wassel Tower because the program was so similar and and well, you have this green area or this metaphor of the city being vertical, but in a in a way it's like a, a concept, no? But at the end, well, you have again paying customers, and and, and the building has to be built today, uh, what in a few years. Um, for me, in the project, and at least what we are trying to think, I and mean, at some point where I think we are uh, success, having success, but at the same time we are failing, is this um, ambivalence between the horizontal and vertical. So everybody has the aim of making a vertical garden or a vertical park, whereas we as humans cannot fly, so we, we move us in an horizontal way. So one thing is to make a park that you have, I don't know, one or two stories, but when you have 100 meters, uh, well, some people are experimenting with uh, cable carril, I don't know how you call it in English, like uh, when you go to ski, so uh, then you, like a swing or something. Oh, yeah. you have something moving along, but I, I don't know, in a sense of more uh, uh, um, hypothetical building or, or, or a little bit less realistic, how do you cope or how would you cope? It's not only for this project. There, uh, there's another one which is literally like continuing the park in vertical, you know? So, uh, well, just to make a, another topic on the conversation. Yeah, yeah. 
No, it's it's interesting. I, I think what you're utilizing, what, what you have over here is a very heavy conceptual approach, uh, uh, guys, to create a void that is so enormous. In, on the other hand, you, you could you could imagine concerning this project that we see over here that it's two towers that are standing opposite of each other, and coincidentally you 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 bridged it and you gave it a green face to both sides. So there is, I think there is nothing wrong with that if you explain it from the fact that you programmed it in such a way that the green void that we have over here gives quality to the spaces that are behind it. And then if additionally you can say, of course, we can travel vertical over there because we bring in a, a drone or a cable or whatever, that's from a conceptual point kind of interesting. But I think if you if you're designing a mixed use project, there is a lot that can give you tools to make it clear how you would sell that concept, a strong concept to any client. So maybe Oliviero, is that something that answers a little bit where you're coming from? Yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, we we it's not because of client or not. We are also in the or I'm least trying to to figure out how to to cope that we don't have uh, wings, and because sometimes you have just the idea of the vertical uh, garden, but at the end of the day, are, there are just labs with green, and you have to take an elevator or one ramp from one place to the other one. Whereas the experience of, of walking, I, I don't know, the Vondel Park in the Netherlands, in, in Amsterdam, you go with your bike and you walk and you sit and you can kiss your girlfriend and then you walk a little bit more. But here it's like it's like a balcony. So can how can we really we are trying to deal with that and in some points we have some hints and many times we are failing. I, I'm not afraid of failing because it's um Again, we, we are not dealing with a client, so we are just trying to to, to, to move the boundary a little bit. Uh, but if you have perhaps you some point in the professional life, you try to 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 to, to deal with it or not or or whatever. Uh, we are having with some projects, for example, as I said, elevators that are not vertical or maybe are vertical but then are horizontal and then back. Uh, yeah, you know, like. Yeah, we, we can we can come up with any idea. I, I think why I asked the question uh, uh, to the other uh, group of how many people live in the building. I think that's what we have to think about. If we create such a strong concept, how many people can actually experience what you're proposing in such a void, for instance? And indeed, if our horizon is horizontal, uh, and you create a vertical garden, what can I understand of that vertical garden? So I, I think it's definitely trying to look for the demography that you're designing for, how many people and what kind of people, and what is their way of moving through the building, and how can you trigger that movement? Because there's nothing wrong with defying gravity, but if you do that 300 meters high, it might be a bit over the top. So maybe concentrate on certain spots where, in, in the case of the other project, um, creates clear identity in, in the fact that there is a community or a group of people that utilizes it. This one, for example, was one of, it has this idea of what we were talking just now, no? the park that gets into the building. Yeah, and it's embedded as the same. I don't know how they solve it at the end. Eh? So now I'm jumping to the void. Perhaps it's very good. Perhaps it's not very good. I don't know. Girls, are you there? Yes. Estamos. Cuéntense los super cortos. Así hay tiempo de ver otros, ¿no? Porque esto, o sea, cómo es que funciona. Okay. So we start thinking our Sorry. Hay mucho eco. Yes, yes. In the tower, uh, this continuing 
community of the city and uh, how the users updated. So we started thinking about the Perdón, chicas, para, para, para. ¿Nadie escucha con eco? ¿Estoy solo yo? Sí, no, no se escucha bien. Sí, sí, tiene mucho eco. Bueno, la line es un poco bad. Fíjense si pueden, o sea, si tenés, estás conectado de dos lados, de desconectarte de alguno de los dos o mutear todos. Intento ponerme auriculares. Ahí, perfecto. Ahora sí. Sí, ahí sí está algo que estaba bien. Ok, no toqué nada, pero bueno. No es mejor, ¿no? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Sunny. Okay. So we understand that this project, this tower, develops as a vertical system implanted in a particular urban context. So understanding that we have uh, this park in front of our building, we try to continue it, continue it, in, like make this vertical park. No, no, Vicky, es terrible, ¿eh? Ponete auriculares o por ahí si puede alguna de tus compañeras, porque no se puede... ¿Ahora? Ahora sí. Ok. Bueno, bueno todos que cuando quieran hablar se ponen auriculares, por favor, chicos. Perfecto. Vamos. So... We have this sense of making the space more human and approach survive making the park where you come from the park that we have in front of our building you can walk but eat and start well otra compañeras no sé es imposible escuchar I can follow it reasonably well yeah? Yeah. Ah, okay, so Franz can follow. Then, okay, you have a very good earring. Yeah, Victoria just <laughs> Okay, so we have uh, we have this thought of a vertical city where you can uh, walk by through this tower and get through, like walking by this park, you can get to the program that is in each floor. So. Uh, we have these residents, the, the hotels, and uh, you can walk through the park and get into uh, the program. Our idea was like uh, continue this park that we have, but in space. So you can walk through it and then you enter to the private uh, program. Um, so we have. Okay, we have uh, these um, three three cores which uh, yes that that connects the public area so you can walk through the park and get the elevator that seems like um, maybe like the Eiffel Tower uh, that goes in diagonal and. It only st it only stops in the floors that are public. That are these big parks that take that take place in like five five floors each. So this elevator only stops on these floors, and then the uh, the user can continue and through this park get to the private programs. Um. So. Um. The morphology of the tower takes part, takes the park from the city to the river in a torsion of 60 degrees, where the visual of the park changes as K as it gains. So we get this connection to the park and the river also. Uh, so uh, this park acts as an organizational element in the tower, where all the programs like merge in this park and all the programs are related and connected through this park. Um, I think that's all. Wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fantastic, uh, Victoria. Thanks. 
Oli, ¿hacemos un zoom de ese, de ese corte? ¿Y cuál? ¿Este? Sí. Sí, creo que no. Ah, bueno. Did you, did you think about, uh, did you think about the different qualities of these different kind of neighborhoods or different parts that are on the, on the different levels? Do you have an idea about that, how to connect it with the program or with its location, how, how higher up the, 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 the more different the park is or, or not? Is that too um, much? Each program, uh, like the residence, the hotel, the offices, have like a specific public program, like, for example, commerce or uh, shops, like gym. So we try to find like the more public programs in each area. So that gets to connect with the park. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I think it would be nice also, like in the other uh, proposals, to take a look at how many use, how many people use those kind of pockets that you have, and the size of that pocket compared to the amount of people and what they are doing there uh, might help you finding kind of the tools in, in what kind of environment it uh, it can become. But I, I think the concept is extremely strong. And the part is on which orientation is it pointed? Is it on the south? Is it on the north? It's on the north. Uh, but remember that we are the other way, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. then it's the same question indeed. Yeah, was it on the north? Sorry? No, no, it, I, I understood. I, it, it was where I thought it was, but then... Uh, there you have the north. Yes. We have some diagrams, um, some, I don't know one, if you, más arriba. Perdón, para, para decirles, one thing with perhaps we, we, I should have told you before, is that here you have like uh, old docks in this line. Here is uh, a river that it's the limit of the city. So this is the city and this is the province of Buenos Aires. And here you have the Rio de la Plata and in front you have Uruguay. And if you live in a tall building of the city, normal tall building, maybe 20 stories, you can see Uruguay. So this high building would be like a, like a lighthouse actually. Yeah. Not the city for the country with, and you enter the city with the, with the ferry boat from Uruguay and you can, and you have this. So it's not only the, the park, also the, the, the these other directions. For all the projects, this goes, huh? Now oh, it's a good location, really. It stands out quite well. And I, I must say, this is, I, I, it's, it's quite complete in its approach, uh, compliments, really. It's got a very strong concept and, and you pinpointed what you think is important. The, the only thing is the diversity of these different pockets of green. I think that would be really nice to tell a little bit about it if you compare it to the program that's on the inside. So because any city park that you would pull up, we also utilize that metaphor for, for the Wassel Tower. Uh, you can look at that park and see what kind of places connect the flow of people through that because Somewhere you need the food and beverage, somewhere you need um, uh, the gym or the theater or anything else that makes that people move through that park. And you can say the same about the, the, the tower, because maybe if I'm in the upper neighborhood, uh, completely on the top, I would still like to go to the central neighborhood because there is something different to find for me over there. Yes, I think that could be really interesting. Because that's the difficulty in any vertical stacking of program. Why would I go to the point that is not mine? Is there something for me to experience over there, whether it's a view or whether it's a amenity?
Do you have one on mind or I pick one? No, you can pick one. It's the last one because I have to give it a quit soon. Uh, right. And then we'll wrap up with, with this one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This is us, yes. I don't know if Felbert is there, but I'm here. So we, when we developed the concept of, of the building, we, we found and we believe that which makes cities uh, important uh, is the, uh, the connection with, between the people, the relationship, which uh, is, if you, if you want to go a little bit down, Oliver, thank you. Uh, no, no, on the, the first diagrams, um, the, the interaction between inhabitants, that's what makes city really function. Um, and we found that in, in high density traditional cities, uh, you, you just go to your building and take a lift and then you, it, 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 uh, it, you, you find yourself in a really small place where you, you only have the door of your apartment and then you leave, you're like in a bubble. And in, in this concept of the vertical city, we, we believe that uh, the, the human interaction between the inhabitants is really important. So we, we develop everything basing from there. If you want to go uh, the, the, the form, the basement, uh, the, um, the, the facade, the, but the, I think the, the most important part of our concept is the atrium, which uh, which connects all all the the units in a, in a vertical place, which it, it's not just a garden or a productive place or, or a place where you you just take a leap. It's a place where you you find yourself with with your neighbors, and and there. Uh, not, not, not also you, you get down from the lift, but also the, the, the products are, are traveling. I, I think first I should explain uh, another concept that it's we, we develop multiple zeros uh, on the um, fragmentation of the, the program of, of the tower. Uh, on, on each part, we can see that on, on the section. In which part? I mean, when, when you get to the to the offices, you you've got a zero. You've got a level zero where you get there, and you, you've got walls, you, you've got public space, and then you get the lift to go to your office. When you get to the hotel, same thing happens. And the most important that that happens is when you get to the resi residential uh, section. Uh, there, you, you reach there, and you you've got the, the public space. You you you've got the commerce. You've got culture. You you've got a, a place where you can find yourself with your neighbors, and you, you can really live in a vertical city. You you are just reaching there to to go to your apartment. You really are able to to live there. That's the the main concept. I I I think you you guys worked it out quite substantially the whole the whole concept, and, and you didn't really show me the the material group. If I, if first the section maybe because I I don't understand your section really. Um, you're talking about the voids. If you zoom in on that section, is that possible? Uh, Oliviero, can you zoom in? Yes, I don't know, but I zoom in, yes. There are more. No, it's, it's okay. I, I see a little bit more now. What what is I think what is important in our in our job also, maybe that's also something to mention to all of you. Um, is when you explain the concept uh, to somebody that didn't see anything before or very briefly, 
try to be as crystal clear as possible. This is a technical drawing uh, with a lot of information that in a way for now, for the explanation of the section and the program, and your core thing, which is the voids, uh, is not necessary. So keep that in mind, try to find the right diagrams and sketches to, uh, to explain the concept. Because over here, the red area is the residential area, am I right? No, the, the blue area, what is the, the, the top. Okay, and then it's got this huge void on the left over there. Yes. With a lift. With with a, a cabotage lift and also a vertical uh, uh, what the, I don't know how to form form a vertical form uh, yeah. where where all the this um, production natural production uh, occurs. Okay. Yeah. And. We we think that that void also could could be a, a good place in which uh, drones could um, lift people and and goods. I mean, you, you can you can call a delivery at the elevated zero, and a drone could uh, reach what you you asked for into into your floor. Uh huh. That's exciting. And then you uh, you have hotel office and then elevated basement. Why, why did you elevate the basement in, in this case? Uh, we when we, we studied uh, this, this kind of buildings, we we found that everyone has uh, a basement which touch, touches the, 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 the serial level, the, the city level. And I, we thought that it was a, a good opportunity to to ask ourselves uh, by studying it, why couldn't the basement be over the, the zero level? Which other things, which which good or which bad things could happen uh, when when you the basement is not in the zero? Uh, so it's like, it's like an experimental. Situation. Yes, it's contradictory, contradictory to its name. Eh? Basement means that it's the basement of your building. So it's kind of funny that you did that. But what I actually, what I, what I actually was really interested in, which you just showed briefly, so your sketches or your model uh, views that you did. These ones? Yeah. Yeah. This is really you went by it so quickly. While well, they really give a, a nice insight of the scale of these different spaces that you create. Is this computer generated or this is by hand? No, it's computer. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we thought that uh, in, in a concept um, statement of the project, if we make a, re, a more realistic image, it, it would uh, lose a lot of, of the concept. Yeah. Oh, they, they really look nice and, and actually quite tempting. I think the scale it's interesting now with these uh, ramps and, and those those ramps uh, are, aren't just for for, um, for go through them, but also uh, gives a scale to the place. I mean, if you've got an, an atrium that is so high that you only measure a, a meter and and, and 70 centimeters, you, you feel like you couldn't uh, really leave that space if you don't have something that uh, makes the scale uh, smaller. Yeah. That's the, the the meant to be of those ramps that, that are crossing the, the void. Great guys, very very interesting shape. I must say, it's 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 a huge tower, eh? And it, I think it's a little bit fatty, no? Yeah, Maybe. Some directions. 
it, it got two directions and that uh, that was on, on another diagram that in which I I didn't uh, explain. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, we've got all the, the, the speech prepared, but uh, sorry, we, we, we lost in the in the way. Um, the the forum that, that that we we also try to to investigate is usually these buildings uh, have a has a, a traditional floor which is rotated on an axis in order to uh, make the, the the shape uh, more more capable to to the to uh, resist the winds or, or by, by that uh, shape movement, uh, giving uh, a different view, and we we try to 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 investigate on, on a way to generate that, but not in a in, with a traditional floor which is rotated on an axis, but on a on a ver on a really vertical way. Uh, so in in the first diagrams, uh, we have like a, a prism, a basic prism. Where uh, we 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 um, identify the those multiple zero levels. Those? No, a little bit up two pages high there. Yeah. And then there we identify the the high level, the high zero level, and and then with these uh, curves and, and deformating them. We amplify that uh, some phases, uh, depending on on the um, on the or orientation and on the the program, the function which is inside the building, in order to make a form which is not just interesting for uh, whoever um, goes by the um, by the highway. Uh, looking at the tower from different views, but also uh, a, a form, a shape which responds in a way to the the function. I mean, it's not like uh, we we try not to make it. Uh, I don't know, uh, like the form which the form just for the form. But uh, the form for the also for the function. Yeah, I think, uh, guys, if, if I look at the different uh, proposals, uh, and, and thanks a lot to sh that you showed me uh, all that hard work that you put into it, um, I, I think it's really appealing to the different ways in which you uh, think about how to organize the tower. And Oliviero, I don't know if you did that by purpose or that it went coincidentally. What what I saw is that the, in the beginning, the, the two examples, the, the stack floors and the neighborhoods that were interconnected, were extremely strong in, in their concept, while you could not really see what a tower would look like. Um, I think the, the, the vertical cuts that um, you guys did in the third one that we looked at. Um, suddenly we, we looked into the interior of the tower, but there was a clear skin, a, a clear massing that, that was present over there. But it was almost like you looked from inside outside, uh, which, which really was kind of appealing, but needs a lot more thought with that inside than uh, means over such a, a, a generous height of 300 meters. Uh, while the last two were really uh, much more conceived as, as kind of a building instead of only a concept. Um, and then the last one maybe was most overwhelming as a building, while on the inside you had these fantastic spaces. But I couldn't see anything of those fantastic spaces on the outside. So always try to marry the two. You cannot only work with an inside, but you also, you cannot only work with an outside. They have to communicate something that is similar. So always try to figure out from programmatic point of view, 
from kind of usage point of view and the demography, what kind of people are living in there, what is the experience that you can feel as well inside as well outside. Yes, we, um, the, the thing is, it's a bit of our fault. We were kind of optimistic about the energy the students would have on this second semester and and the time and the school changed the time frame and we are overwhelmed with the pandemic and everything and tired so normally we make a we, we, you saw last year more like technical let's say or more real buildings so we started that way and when we realized that this was not going to be possible to really just to make a good basement could take like about a month of development with the with the students we we went more for the fantasy and so some students grab it uh, and went for fantasy and some no and some went and uh, uh, stay in between and we for us also as a professor so and teachers it's new because we our school is very professionalist so we to make a building that we don't know where are the columns or how the the all the technical things it's strange for us as well to to be able to correct to them yeah. but we're trying to deal i think what you said uh, it's exactly uh, which is is it's a little bit of fantasy but has to be realistic and we call some of the buildings we are seeing perhaps the last one in the outside has this problem that looks like a office building that could be in New York or Dubai or whatever, and it lacks this uh, this expression of the of the inside. And on the other hand, you have the two first that were, or the second especially, that you asked where the facade goes, that you go flying. No, uh, there, it's a balance. We are trying to find it, and hopefully, with your insights, it's easier for them to 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 find it i don't want to i know you have in a tight schedule and we already are past it so i want to to thank you in the name of the school the the courses the two chairs and lester cajie hanches and tasher maldonado and the students of course too because we are in between times so it's early for some and late for for the other course and so thanks to students for 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 being with us the, the teachers as well and especially you Franz, for for sharing where your presentation your knowledge and and your time and also to the office that uh lend you for for a couple of hours and now that you know i mean i i know the, how it is to be in a big office and 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 what what it takes to to take two two and a half hours to out of the daily work so uh, and shusha of course for for well she's not here but for for for, for setting the thing um so again many many thanks and i don't know if you want to, to say something more otherwise just have a nice week and send me the link before please because everybody's asking for the for the link with the with, with the recording so they can hear okay. again yeah of course of course no guys uh, thanks a lot for your presence and and uh, listening to me also about what we do and and um if you have any questions or looking for more information then let oliverio knows he he knows where to find me and i uh, i really i uh, i admire the the work that you're doing despite the hardship despite the fact that you're all working alone at home and it's hard to have this kind of very physical way of doing the design process we have the same in the office a lot of my colleagues have to stay at home because it's just not safe over here and we really miss that so i thought it was amazing that you came virtual to us in Amsterdam in such a big group uh, and I think uh, what you showed is really um, kind of a good effort in trying to think about what the profession can bring us and keep on going and, and let me know the end result I'm, I'm really very curious thanks Oliverio for, uh, for organizing oh, on the contrary again many many thanks and we let you with your uh, with your schedule of every day 
Um, again, many, many thanks. Okay. Hey, guys. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.